What's up everybody? Welcome back to FNG Academy. I just had a quick announcement. I'm proud to say that we've been helping people get selected for three years now. I've been getting a lot of messages about uh, people thanking us and saying that they just graduated from uh, selection and they got selected. Uh, people graduating the Q course. Uh, one of my buddies just sent me a video uh, from the Charlie committee. Yes. If you guys have ever heard of the FNG Academy, raise your hands and all their hands went up and it just filled me with pride. Um, so part of the way that we do that is making sure that you guys are physically fit and ready for selection. And the way we've been doing that for the past couple years is by sending you to a Green Beret we know and trust, Kevin over at 18 Alpha Fitness. So if you want to get selected, you need to be in the best shape possible and you need a programmer who knows what they're talking about. So go check out Kevin over at 18 Alpha Fitness. Use code word BUCK to get a discount. Tell him we sent you and hook you up. Congrats to everyone who's been getting selected lately and we'll see you guys on the next one. What's up guys? Welcome to this episode of Beers and Breakdowns. In this episode, we're doing a pretty dope movie called a ha Ooh, his lips. <laughs> called <laughs> Hamburger, Hamburger Hill. Hill. <laughs> You guys recommended this one to make sure we got in there and watched it. It's a pretty damn awesome movie. Let's jump into Hamburger Hill. Meanwhile, you said nothing. Jesus. <laughs> He's a real happy dad over here. <laughs> I told him to clear his graveyard. <laughs> Whoa. She's fucking for peace, man. I'm on the wrong side. What? What? Back off. Back off. Back off. I married her, man. I meant nothing by it. Shake, shake hands, man. We're airborne. We don't start fights. We'll finish them. <laughs> really, that guy's never been to Fort Bragg because they do start fights. <laughs> Yeah, they finish them, they start them, they, they finish them. They're the with whole each night. other, with yeah. civilians, with anybody. Yeah, it doesn't matter. With any bar outside of, what was it, Fort Liberty now? Yeah. Whoever's game. <laughs> I just thought it was funny. He's like, we're airborne, man. We're airborne. We don't start fights. And then they added, like, uh, they added the voiceover later. And he's like, I married her. It's like, no one's lips are moving. Uh, <laughs> it was just like, Jesus was like, I married her. <laughs> <laughs> they go, oh, we don't start fights, man. Stop. This is weird. They're all half naked, covered yeah. in mud. <laughs> so as a private, <laughs> uh, if somebody says like that, something says something like that about your wife in the field, in the picture, you're just going to make up that quick? No. You're no. probably going to be fighting. Yeah. Okay. But people do make up pretty quickly. Yeah. Like, After you fight, you, you like make in up. a fight. Well, I, I realized then, that yeah. it was like relatively quickly, but not like, oh, this guy's like, hey, shake his hand. It's like, yeah, hey, I mean, you know what he just said about my fucking picture? Of also... My fucking also, you got to know your audience and you got to know the environment you in, you're in. If you bring out a picture like that, some things are going to get sick. Like, yeah. yeah. That makes so sense. You don't yeah. bring out a picture of your old lady in front of a, people you, you don't know, a bunch of soldiers. Especially when you're deployed, you haven't been around women for a long time. A yeah, picture you, might go missing. If a, <laughs> if a picture comes out, there's going to be a whole lot of, let me see that. Yeah. Let me see that. And they're looking over your shoulder, they're putting it in the spank bank. Yeah. yeah. And you don't want sure. a picture of your old lady in someone else's spank bank. <laughs> So you just keep that shit tucked away nice and neat. You look at it on your own fucking time. What was the movie we did? Oh, it was Generation Kill, wasn't it? Where they were passing around the guy's wife's picture or something? Oh, yeah. Was it Generation Kill? I think was so. Gen Kill? I think it was. Uh, Gen Kill or... Uh, the reporter's wife. Uh, Jarhead, I Jarhead think they did it. Them. Was yeah, it? Yeah. Okay. So it's like, oh, remember Jarhead was the video, wasn't it? Where he watched his, yeah. they sent him the video of yeah, his wife getting yeah, reeled out. Yeah. And everyone was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the main character yeah. comes back and he's like, fuck that guy. Let's watch this shit again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's oh. like, you leave your shit away. But that, that fucking scene was so corny, dude. He's like, hey, hey, you got <laughs> Come on, guys. We're airborne, man. We don't start <laughs> fights. We finish them. Like, all right, well, let me finish it. <laughs> yeah, all right, all right, whatever. That's cool, bro. That's, that's a cool gay moment you guys just had. <laughs> Fucking. <laughs> he did say last time he was going to start bringing it back. People, you will brush your teeth in a rapid vertical motion for one minute. <laughs> that's up and down for you rebel motherfuckers. <laughs> now, when I say stop, you turn to your right and you brush. Ready? Brush. <laughs> <laughs> first of all this is my favorite character in the whole movie the medic yeah he's fucking awesome then second how army is that to have mandatory teeth brushing yes. by being while being supervised by the medic that's what i was thinking that is like so military right dude there. that's army is <laughs> we will 
can supervise you very all the way down to the most minute thing you yeah. could possibly do in your day. Your masturbation session, he's just like, he's like you are not stroking it <laughs> adequately, sir. You <laughs> will pull at three to five strokes per every three and a half seconds without fail until you ejaculate. Look at me in the eyes, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I can't come. You will ejaculate right now. I can't do it. You better come right now. The other ones come in. They're surrounding you. You better come right now. My skin's coming out. Then you get the one weirdo that just like, yeah. <laughs> He's like, I love that military. Uh, Hoorah. So we, we actually had in AIT, we had a stinky kid. You guys ever have a stinky kid? No. Well, we had one guy who would refuse to shower. I don't know what his deal was, um, but he always smelled. And his roommate, because we were all in, in two room, uh, two man rooms, his roommate was always complaining about it to the drill sergeants. And one day, as we're getting ready to go to breakfast in the morning, the drill sergeants call him out and they hand him an MRE and like, you can't go. Like, you need to go take a shower right now. And it got to the point where one of them had to go in there while the guy showered. Yeah. I mean, it's not like standing in the shower with him, but he stood in the room while the guy showered just to make sure that he showered because he was so disgusting. I wouldn't be surprised if he stood in the shower with them. I mean, I mean that's the next step. We all had to fucking go in the showers together and yeah. like shower, and they're like, get in there, get in there, and you're all fucking finding a thing. You're yeah. just like scrubbing your nuts. Oh, like, basically when you, yeah. you get like 30 seconds yeah. to shower real quick. I'm trying to rip your balls off of the piece of soap. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, I remember my first time. Are they brushing again? I know. Oh. Oh, yeah, LZ secure. Negative contact over. Oh, Meyer! Prince! Smitty! Move these people out! You're doing fine, LT. Fine. These guys know what they're doing. Oh, yeah, most definitely. Yes, bro. Dude, just the terrain. Oh, it's miserable. Miserable. Give me buildings. Give me something I could use as a tactical advantage, like clear, own. I want a space I can own. Yeah. I want a space that we as a force could take over and own it, so at least for some amount of time we could feel safe. Yeah, out there, man, you never know. Because you can your field of vision is only so far into the woods. Yep. And for me, what I'm when I'm looking at that, I'm looking at the environment. It's hot, it's humid. They're going up and down these mountains. They're fighting through thick brush. Like it's physically demanding and taxing. You they're, never know where anybody is. Right. They're always dehydrated, up, I'm sure. Yeah, you can't set up like good tactical positions. Most of the time you're in all this like the heavy wooded environment like people could be sneaking up on you at any time they yeah. the enemy has underground uh dugouts and tunnels so they could literally come up behind you at any point it's the worst it's the worst situation the worst in my ex in my imagination fighting experience i could possibly think jungle of. warfare jungle warfare oh for sure fuck that miserable dude. give me a fucking building we will fight for that building once we own that <laughs> building we own that, and then now we could defend it yeah. until we decide to move to another one. So essentially leapfrogging, you know, this tactics. Or wide open terrain to where we could pick, you know, the best spot out of this whole area and then own that section based on the limiting factors, the limiting capabilities of our fire firing systems, and then the, knowing the capabilities of their firing system. They're firing, you know, their weapons. So, but to have the forest, like, they could just be up on you with a fucking knife hiding yeah. in a tree and come out and start shanking your ass. And yeah, you didn't even sucks. know they were there next to you the whole time. I bet you I bet these guys frequently had that like eerie feeling like somebody's watching you at all all times. You're worried about snakes. Yeah. You're worried about fucking poisonous spiders, creepy poisonous crawlies everywhere. frogs, creepy crawlies. Things are going to bite you, infect you, diseases, <laughs> and not even to get to the human beings out there that want you dead. <laughs> Everything wants the to kill you. The booby traps, the whole nine. Like every step you take is a fucking potentially your last. Everything's against you. That's Everything's miserable. against you. Nature wants to kill you, and then human beings want to kill you. <laughs> that. Let me get one or the other. <laughs> like I've seen Naked and Afraid. The jungle is a mother. <laughs> dude <laughs> like they don't got people hunting them <laughs> yeah there's not even people hunting them out there and they're dying left and right yeah like, that shit's miserable nothing not a thing not a thing that don shito that's a war machine bro not a thing nice nothing not a thing 
thing. It don't mean nothing. Not a thing. It don't mean nothing. Not a thing. It don't mean nothing. Not a thing. What did I miss? Yo, I'd be the only white boy up there being like, it don't mean nothing. <laughs> not a thing. <laughs> it like, don't mean nothing. <laughs> Sit your ass down. Not a thing. <laughs> like, if you think about it, the, the camaraderie within the military is one thing. But then you have blacks at the time who were segregated, mm -hmm. so they also had an even deeper camaraderie. Not only are you in the army, but were in the army as black men. So it's like you, you they have such a deep bond that watching this, it's like, fuck, man, I want to hang out with War Machine. I want to be in that crew. Like, look at all these white boys. They all want to get up and be like, it don't mean nothing. Not a thing. It don't mean nothing. And, but instead, they got to sit back and be like, damn, I guys are fucking tight. Like, well, I don't even like you. Like, shit. I wish, we even, had, I wish we had something to say. Uh, yeah, we don't have no camaraderie like that. We got no handshake. We got nothing. I fucking hate you motherfuckers. I can't wait to get out of here. Oh, that's hilarious. I just, and I really like the actor, the War Machine actor. Mm. Cheadle? Cheadle. What is his name? Don Cheadle. Don Cheadle. Don Cheadle. Oh, come on. Don't tell me he died for God, country, and the 101st Airborne. Hey, man, I, I never say that shit to anybody. <laughs> that shit to he anybody. Didn't die for anything. Didn't leave his goddamn guts on a goddamn trail in the goddamn Ashaw Valley for, for hometown metal, any of that bullshit. Blanked his automatic weapon and took it out for you and for third squad. Man, don't you give him anything less. No, that dude got offended, bro, and his speech <laughs> hit. Yeah. yeah. I loved it. He's like, oh, don't tell me you did for God country. This guy just went on a spiel. He's like, oh, he didn't do a damn fucking damn fuck you. He did a fucking. <laughs> shit, didn't he? Nerf, nerf, nerf. <laughs> it, black and white at the same time. Dude, right he's like, <laughs> he got pissed. And he was mm -hmm. like, he let him have it. He's like, no, he didn't He didn't die for God country. He didn't, he didn't, he's not trying to make it a thing. He died for you and the fucking those yeah. guys right there. And he's like, don't tell me anything else. That little blip of non-coherent <laughs> babble <laughs> made perfect sense to anybody who's been in the military. Yeah. He said he got pissed off. I was like, fucking motherfucker, he died for you and them. Yeah. That's why he pulled his weapon out. That's why he shot it. And that's why he got shot. You're not out there like about to go into a house and you're like, this is for America. Like, right. No, this is so you don't die. Yeah. All right, so right there was pretty cool because there's a little comparison of our grenades versus theirs. So our grenades uh, are encapsulated by the steel, and ours are more for shrapnel. Mm -hmm. um, and so we have less explosive area, but it covers more range in, in the shrapnel penetration because of the way our grenades are. Um, and then the benefits of the stick grenade, which what they're using, is it's a larger explosive area because it's not encapsulated by the steel. Uh, but then less, you know, less secondary damage from the shrapnel. So there's no right. shrapnel, so the, the explosive itself creates larger damage area, mm -hmm. um, but then you don't have that secondary blast area. So it's just that explosive shockwave, essentially, that's killing yeah. the people. So For ours, that's why ours are called frag grenades, which is short for fragmentation grenades, because right. that steel, is it steel? Whatever, I think it's steel. Yeah. It's... It, basically fragments when it and explodes. And then pushes out. Yeah. So the explosion damage range is smaller, but then the the damage of the the shrapnel yeah. is bigger, but then it also projects typically up and out. Um, so it's like a trade-off between the, the shrapnel and the stick grenades. But then those stick grenades actually have a cap that you could put on them, so then it creates more shrapnel from it. Didn't know that. So they have, yeah, I didn't either. I had to look it up, but it was like actual, they have shrapnel caps. Yeah. And then another cool thing about those, um, which is time consuming, so it didn't happen very often, but you could take the tops off of those stick grenades and then you could tie them to, together 
onto one. So then you have one uh, stick with like five or six of the the caps on it to create a bigger explosion. Ooh. So then that way they could use that against like tanks and armor and stuff like that. It's pretty interesting. Yeah, didn't know that. So obviously the heavier weight on that stick, per, you know, you can't throw it as far. But that's one of the benefits from those stick grenades is think about throwing a baseball versus uh, throwing that stick. Yeah. Like I think you can get probably a lot more trajectory off the whipping of that stick than you can of throwing a, a steel ball. Yeah, and if you've never thrown, if you're not in the military, you probably haven't thrown a grenade. Mm-hmm. They're pretty heavy, and they're kind of awkward to throw. It it's is. not like a baseball. Like you think, I'm just going to yeah. drill it right in there. That's not how it works. Well, and think about it is that the baseball is a, just a round ball, so you could th- you can grab it and throw it however way it's comfortable. But you can't do that with a grenade because you're holding the, the spoon. Yeah. So you grab the spoon, and you're essentially holding it like, like a fist, like this, Right, you know, you're holding it like this, and then you have to pull the the uh, pin, and then throw it, releasing the spoon. So you don't get like a full baseball yeah. throw. You don't get the feeling of a baseball throw. You get this like C clamp kind of throw. It's awkward. You're not throwing a curveball or a right. fastball or anything like that. You're just throwing it and hoping that it lands in the vicinity. Yeah. So you really do just kind of get like a launching as more that stick. I feel like you can aim it better and get more of a directed throw. I'd like to throw one. That'd be pretty cool yeah. to see. So if I were to if I were to pick, I think carrying wise, uh, that stick would probably be lighter too because you have wood. The only shitty thing about the stick grenade, which I don't like, um, so with our grenades, it's grab the pin, pull it, and throw. Mm-hmm. With those sticks, you have to open up a cap at the bottom, and then it's a pull tab that ignite that starts the five second fuse. Oh. So ours is a three More, and a half. So yeah. let's just pull the pin, throw. Theirs is you have to undo the cap, pull, and then throw, and then it's five seconds. I don't like the fact that you have to do that, but it's a tool. Each tool has its own capabilities. Yeah. If I were to choose, I would choose both. Exactly. Yeah. I would want both, you know, so I could use one when it's more appropriate for the situation. If you had that option. If I had that option. <laughs> and you weren't already wearing 70 pounds of gear. Right. So it's like in Afghanistan, I didn't carry grenades. And I'm going to be honest, there's a, that video when uh, the guy was on the other side of the wall, a grenade was the perfect choice. Yeah, I didn't have one on me. There, you know, you have choices that you have to live with. And I didn't have a grenade to throw when I needed it most, but I also wasn't carrying the weight. And then some guys threw grenades, didn't do anything to the guy, and he moved on us and almost killed us. So you're always balancing tactical decisions. Yeah. That's pretty much worst case scenario. That's a nightmare. You're trying to complete a fucking Spartan race <laughs> while there's a machine gun at a higher le- elevation than you fucking, was it defilade firing on your entire position? Yeah. Fighting uphill is bad enough. Fighting in a muddy mud muddy terrain like this is terrible. It's just Fighting pure in an uphill muddy terrain where they're going every time they move, they start sliding back down. It's r- ridiculous. It's a fucking nightmare. It's almost like that show Wipeout. Have you ever seen that? Yeah. Where like they're doing just stupid shit like this, but nobody's trying to kill them. Yeah. It's like Wipeout, but they're shooting machine guns at you. Yeah, that's miserable. It's Wipeout has a fucking affair with Spartan Race, <laughs> and then someone's trying to fucking murder you at the same time. <laughs> It's like, uh, it's Spartan Race, Wipeout meets the first 48, all shoved into one nightmare situation, which actually fucking happened, yeah, that which sucks. is a real life thing. And the worst part of it all was that Hamburger Hill had no strategic importance or value at all whatsoever. Nope. We left that place after losing all these soldiers. We left that place like three days later. Yep. And they said, "There's the generals were like, there's no strategic value to Hamburger Hill. It was just because that's where they were, so that's where we went to kill them. 
I feel like there was better ways to do this. Yeah. Just drop a bunch of bombs, maybe. I don't know. Like a man. fucking a bomb on that bitch. Yeah. Like, like the Moab, to like do Just, yeah, erase the hill, erase that fucking hill with the, the all the firepower you can. Napalm, who gives a shit? The napalm at that time was still loud, so I think. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. So Maybe fucking not. send that shit, but don't send us to die on a hill, and then just to leave the hill three days okay. later. But that's why it's so important that you don't associate what you're doing with the reason you're doing it. When we go into combat, we can't say, well, we got to go take this position because of the higher strategic Im- importance of the overall mission and the value to our country and all this stuff. And it's like, if you do that, you're in the wrong fucking line of work. Yeah. You need to be like, okay, well, this is where they told me to go, and my boys trust me to do the right thing, and I trust them to do the right thing, and I have to make sure that they come back alive. Yeah. Because otherwise, you'll look at all these people that died on Hamburger Hill and say that it was all for nothing because that – Hill had no strategic value. It was a complete shit show. And then we just gave it away after a few days. I, in Afghanistan, we had the same thing happen. We fought our asses off to take this position from the uh, from ISIS, pushed their asses out of there, killed those motherfuckers. And for what? All we did was leave it to the Afghans to keep. They gave it back to ISIS within a couple weeks. Do I give a shit that they gave back that position? No. I don't give a because I'm there to fight with my boys. And I'm there to go do shit that most people don't get to do in their lives and experience things that most people don't get to experience. And f- pucker my butthole in a way <laughs> that most people will never realize. Yeah. You know? I'm not there to own some piece of territory in f- in the middle of Afghanistan and plant a US flag. And if you do, you're going to be miserable because yeah. a lot of the things we risk our lives for are fucking pointless. Yep. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> On that note, <laughs> hope you enjoy this episode of Beers and Breakdowns, ladies and gentlemen. Go sign up for the military. Hey, <laughs> they're looking for you. <laughs> Uncle Sam wants you. <laughs> hey, we're airborne. Yeah, we're airborne. <laughs> hey, hey. Uh, it don't mean a thing. What are they saying? <laughs> I forgot what it was. Oh, I forgot the chant. Dun, dun, dun. Don't mean a thing. Oh, well. Ah, well. See you guys in the next episode. (laughs) Peace. Peace.